Hey Miller, Strategy Battle Gamers. We're here today to Tactics Talk. Today we're going to be talking about Warbands. Yes, so this is pretty much a uh, part two of our How to Build an Army. Mm -hmm. um, because how to, how to Build an Army is so dynamic and stuff, there's a lot of ins and outs. And I think we covered a little bit, mm -hmm. you know, but there's a, it's a much broader subject than just uh, one video. So Tip of the iceberg. Yeah. So last video we did talk about Synergy. Uh, my yeah, heroes, my yes. fate. But today we're actually talking about the warbands aspect of it. Warbands and, and maybe equipment and yeah. war gear. So, um, one thing that I'm going to start with is both of us started like this. So, the, one of the biggest things to me is how you use the points you have. So, in a 700 point game, if you spend... 200 points on a bow warband. Let's just say you specifically have a warband dedicated to bow fire, and you have all of them upgraded to bows. And then you have a hero like Legolas, or Haladir, or Baragond, or uh, Bard, with the bow, some of that, just dedicated to sit back and shoot. Now, in theory, it's not a bad idea. No. no. Yeah. no in theory, no. So, what we learned is... If you have that full warband like that, probably about a hundred points of 100 troops points plus hero plus hero. It's about two hundred points probably thereabouts. Yeah, if you're using one of those. Yeah. So that becomes a point sink. Now what I mean by that is is you have two hundred points sitting in the back, okay, and then that means you have five hundred points in the front fighting the battle against possibly. 700 points. So you're, so you're outpointed in the front because you have the, the higher, this, this point sink in the back shooting, and especially for good armies, you cannot shoot into combat. So when the game gets into combat, and it, and it will, yeah. then it becomes a point sink and... You don't make any yeah. points, is what, what he's saying. Is I've, I've played with Gondor, my Citadel Guard bow. That's a very expensive proposition. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's 66 points for six of them. Actually... Yeah, it's more than that. It's uh, it's yeah, it's about that. So, um, that's they're not gonna make the points. They might kill a few guys, get a couple lucky shots, but having ten of them in the back, uh, it always happens. Uh, when the game gets in combat, when the game moves on, uh, they just sit there and I have to, have to move them down and move them forward, and yeah, they don't make up their points. Uh, pretty much prime example is at Nova last year. I had a dedicated warband with Legolas. The entire, and literally everyone I versed had a blinding light of some sort. Well, not everyone, but the majority. And it really hurt my army because Thranduil, Tariel, and my uh, 24 guys in front would get outnumbered. Because yeah. the guy's whole army would be there. So, um, that's basically what happened at Nova. And it's happened a few other times. Um, now, there are armies. So, we're talking about warbands. So, war gear. So, when you're building an army, when, you, when you're building specifically a warband, you want your hero, of course, and I would recommend not putting a full warband of bow fire, of bows. No. You know, give your back rank. Here's what we like to do. So you have your back rank uh, with spears and bow. A lot of models can do that. So, for instance, Rangers of the North. Or Rangers would, of the Gondor. Rangers of the Gondor. Citadel Guard. Citadel Guard. Uh, guys like that. Crossbows. I, I think they pikes. But that's elf Warriors. Elf Warriors. Pretty much any warrior faction in the game can do. And that's become a very popular thing, uh, especially, I like that, because then you can, you don't have to upgrade the whole warband, or the whole spear support, just a few bam, you can get a few lucky shots. Yeah. So, it's part two of that is, the, the models do get a little more expensive, but then you add up the points of how much that costs compared to the full warband of Bowfire, yeah. and it's a lot cheaper. And uh, it has saved me some points when I when I kind of merge my army like that. Yeah, it's it's just part of going back to that synergy. Yeah, having everything kind of work well together. Mm -hmm. With me personally, I have to have Citadel Guard. Um, I don't have a whole lot of them, but they are good to have a few to sit back, equip them with bows. They have bodyguards so they can sit on, on an objective and be pretty successful that way. So yeah, so um. So that's your archery aspect. That's archery aspect. So when you have like uh, another th a cool thing about warbands is let's talk about heroes real quick. Mm -hmm. If a hero can take a mount, it's generally a good thing. Yeah, uh, almost always. And that's another like honestly going to Nova last year gave me a lot of 
kind of it kind of reaffirmed things I thought, and it kind of uh, it taught me things. Uh, and I mean, honestly, I've been playing for a long time. You learn, you still learn things. Um, so it, what, what was it? It's a hard, it's an easy game to learn, but a hard one to master. Yeah, exactly. And it really is. And so. I haven't mastered it. And I've been playing for over ten years. Yeah. So here's um here's the thing about the mounts. Every hero should be mounted. If they can take a horse, you should take them on a horse. Even if they get knocked off their horse in the first turn, it means that your guy, your hero, is not getting targeted. So in a sense, in a sense, it gives him an extra wound. And that's the way I look at it. Yeah. Um, gives him an extra defense, uh, extra buffer yeah. against shooting. Now, especially if Rohan, and this always happens with Rohan for some reason. Someone I versus a really good archer opponent, they hit. They hit the mount. They don't wound the mount. It's like the dice roll in between really fouls up their roll for the. Uh, yeah. so, I mean, sometimes they do get killed, of course. But. So yeah. So having a mounted hero also boosts their um, attack, their power yeah, so, so much. Yes, the power warband. And having um, a few mounted models in the warband with him. Yeah. Now, we'll go into all mounted armies later. But what he does is he has some Gondor knights. Yeah. With. His war mixed in, you, yeah, they're all then, mixed in. Because then they go in, they get the charge, knock them down. Yeah, yeah. and it, it's kind of bad that whole thing. If you take a whole lot, if you're not playing a mounted army and you take a whole lot of knights, it's kind of a point sink. Mm -hmm. uh, I like to take a few to have that uh, threat present. Kind of like the archery, I don't have to have a whole lot, but I like to have a few to have that threat present. And uh, that's how I like to do that, and they are good for... Because then they kind of all group up with my mounted heroes and just... Charge, charge four, charge sides or whatever. Mm -hmm. It's a very uh, nice thing. Okay. So, uh, what do you think about banners and horns? Banners. Uh, okay. So horns. I know um, horns for certain armies. Horns for certain armies are a must. Mm -hmm. um, I think for Gondor they really help. I never have enough points to field a horn. <laughs> so I know your whole army has bodyguard. Yeah, but I believe that a banner is a must. Yeah. A banner is a must. I always try to take a banner. That's always one thing I always try to fit in with my war bands. Is one banner. Yeah, I agree. No, I've had so many games where I, I got where I didn't put the banner and I didn't have enough points. I ran in, I rolled terrible, and then I lose the combat, my guy backs up, I die. Then I had a game where I go in there with the banner, I roll I, I roll two ones. They re -rolled and I re roll and I get a six. Yeah. So yeah, banner is really good, especially if, if you so there's like a there's something I call the general's warband. And that's the warband where I like to put the huge uh the better models, better you know, better guys, the banner, etc. So, my my general's war band is Amir, and well, sorry, I'm gonna rearrange it right now. But my general's war band is gonna be Amir, three sons of Errol, and the banner, mm -hmm. and that's gonna be a really hard hitting force. Three sons of Errol and the charge, of course, are devastating, but uh, yeah. So banners must take. For any warband, well, not any, not, not, not one of each warband, but yeah. your general's for warband. For an army, yeah, for an army, for an army, a, a better. And that and so with certain cavalry models, you can take lances, and that's a must. Mm -hmm. Lance, if you well, actually, they normally come with a lance, but if you can equip a lance with a hero, yeah, that's a definitely. must. Emir Hill, uh, I think Emir Hill comes along, but. But, but uh, uh, Faramir is always needs a, a lance, mm -hmm. and you can get Boromir a lance. I actually taken Boromir with the lance, not the banner. Yeah, he's not as expensive. Yeah, he's not as expensive, but he has uh, mm -hmm. that better yeah. knockout power. So yeah, so heroes mounted with lances, banners, war horns. Those are all good options, depending on what army you play. Because some armies you don't really like elves don't really need war horns. Rohan has the special war horn with Eric and Brand, so you don't really need to buy one. Um, I see probably some fiefdom armies, probably Arnor, because Arnor is troops. Yeah, Courage too. Yep. They, they um, would need that. That would give them Courage 4. Probably many evil good. armies like Mordor. I think they take like a Numenorian, black like Numenorian with a horn. So yeah, the horns, mm -hmm. so that's kind of the war gear aspect. And also it's good to have just a shield wall, uh, sh guy shield, guy with shield in front. Shields and spear. If you can take a shield, take it. It's yeah. worth the point yeah. to give your guy higher defense. So, um, what else? So, I think... Special troops. Um, yeah, so special troops. Exactly, yeah. Heavy so. troops like Fountain Guard. I, I take Fountain Guard. I mean, I think they're one of Gondor's better 
better models, but then you can take a lot of court guys who are uh, a must. They're fight six pike. But not too many of them. Not too many of them. Because we... T uh, so here's another thing is when we went to Nova last year, his army was consistent of all pretty much all court guard with a front wall of the warriors. And the court guard are really good. On paper, they had the fight six, or fight five, or... Fight six, fight six defense five. Defense five, pike. Pike. Yeah. So, my, my one... My one gripe about that is if you only want to throw two or three in your army just to have that fight six, they can only support three other pikes, which I think is a rule that should go back to supporting spears. Um, yeah. Just because. But, so if you take, you have to have enough to be able to support three each other. And that, you know, maybe two in each warband or something. Yeah. But, uh, so like Rohan, for instance, I know a lot of people like Sons of Errol, and they are really good, but they're pretty expensive. They're almost like a mini hero in points. Uh, which there are many here on stats too, but um, I think a good number for them, a good number for like many special troops would be six. Half a warband worth. Uh, I normally take six bro guard, yeah. uh, Kazad guard, or Kazad uh, guard, Iron example guard. That. Yeah. Um, although Kazads are pretty good, are reasonably probably priced. The, probably the better of the special troops. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, like uh, some troops like Watchers of Karna and the uh, Reavers are so well worth their points that you probably have a whole army of them. Yeah. And be fine. It's kind of like Fountain Guard. Like, they're they're cheap enough where you can take a substantial yeah, amount and of they're and they're worth the extra points. But then there are troops like the... Sons uh, of Well, Sentinels. Sentinels, For, yeah. for the uh, Wood Elves, and they are a special troop, and, and they're, they're very expensive. expensive. Yeah. yeah. Mirkwood Rangers are another thing. Unless you have a full Mirkwood Ranger army... Well, I guess you could throw a few, and it'd be nice to have some bow fire that can't get countered, but... I, I kind of learned Markwood Rangers are a really expensive troop choice to yeah. have. Um, I used to take them a lot, especially when there was no other elf faction, elf stuff for Thrandall's Halls. But they really have a kind of a... When you get in combat, you might not, but ten, ten like, what happens is you won't kill as many guys as you think in shooting, <laughs> which always happens to me. Or wound, you'll roll really good to hit, and then you won't roll enough sixes. Um, which happens to me a lot. Uh, so right. I, I guess the best type of warband is one that has multiple units in it. You want to like a versatile. A versatile. You want your good hero on a horse. Then you want your front ranks, maybe shield. Maybe yeah. have two uh, special troops, and then you have a support unit with bow, and that. And don't forget special. Do you have special troops? Yeah. And, and I think the the guy does it best is Derek because mm -hmm. he has a lot of units in his army. Yeah. He has like five or what. Four or five different units. Yeah, so Derek uh, plays a Roger. You've seen him on our uh, channel. Uh, he has a really nasty Herald list where he has uh, Akbar, Barian, or whatever they're called, the Akbran uh, Guard, Reavers, uh, Reavers, Watchers of Karna, Serpent Guard. Uh, it's a huge, it's a really elite Herald army. What's the crowd, the crossbow guys? Uh, he has crossbow. Arbor is just about, yeah. Uh, Some of them. Yeah, he, he has just a lot of different lot units. Of troops. And honestly, it's really hard to try and fight all that. Yeah, it works well together too. Um, all of it works well together. The, when you get in combat, the Golden King gets in there. He has the uh, Knight of Boombar who just commands, gets trapped. Your guy's gonna die because the guard have the two handed weapon burly rule with you know strength four and all that. So, uh, it's a really good list, and it's like. Kind of the list, it's the list that just shows having the versatile troop choice helps. So when I, I burst in my, uh, with my elves and he was able to like, kite, uh, he, he just like killed three heroes in one turn. It was, it was really heartbreaking, but, um, I was able to do it Brohan then, because I had to do, do a, uh, flank charge and basically, you know, focus specifically on his, his yeah. caster, but it's a really hard list and... It's pretty much a prime example of like list like warband point like the point every point made up itself in that army. Yeah, it goes back to that 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 main uh, staple, which is synergy. Yes, yeah, you know if you have a good warband that has a variety of units and mm -hmm. then works well together, then it has good synergy, and works well together. So. And but that's kind of, I think it was good that, because I wanted to come back and talk about a lot of the stuff that we missed in the yeah. first video. Well, we didn't really talk about it just because yeah, we, we, were, we were talking about a specific army. Yeah. Now we're doing about Warband. So, yeah. um, by the way, Derek beat us like seven times in a row or something with that list yeah. uh, before that. So, um, 
So then, here another thing uh, is mon like monsters. I think when you put a monster in a warband, some monsters. First off, let's talk about guys that can't lead warbands. They have a little flag next to their name. Yeah. Um, like dragon, uh, cave tricks. I think for Mordor, uh, there's some guys in the uh, like the king's huntsman <laughs> for some reason. Yeah, Pip Mary for Rohan. Uh, you know, Pippin for Gondor. Pippin for Gondor. Certain models like that, they cannot lead the warband. Um, those guys tend to be. I don't know. I don't, I've never really taken Mary. I've never taken him, uh, even though he has this horn and stuff. Eric Green, yeah. you know, is better. I'd say they'd probably be good if you were had an extra some points. You know, the amount of points they cost to throw them into the thing. But yeah, Mary's pretty good because you can take a pony. Pippin right. can take a pony. Yeah, too, pony. Yeah. yeah, pivot. So yeah, you know. Uh, you go run and take objectives with them, and they have will to yep. pass courage test or resist or whatever they gotta do. But resistance. But but they can't lead a warband. No. And you know they're upgraded. To, they're reasonably expensive. Um, well. All right, guys. Sorry, we had to uh, do something real quick, but uh, we're back. So um, uh, so yeah, we're talking about a uh, heroes that can't lead warbands. They tend to be. Uh, good for certain things like maybe capping objectives yeah. if you have the right amount of points. Yeah, left. if you have a, a ni nice amount of points left, then yeah, you could take models like uh, the King's Huntsman, yeah. Mary Pippin, uh, yeah. etc. But uh, I think Fatty uh, Bulger, uh, Troll Chieftain, can they lead Warband? I believe they can. So that that'd be a good. They're, actually, I know a lot of people take Troll Chieftains just because they're they're very reasonably cost for their points. And they can lead a warband. And honestly, I've seen a lot of more lists with them in it. And I'm always scared of that that model because he's he looks intimidating. The model himself, and then he has a stat line, you know, by itself is scary. Fight so. eight, uh, fight eight, right? Fight, fight seven, eight, eight, seven, eight or seven, seven, eight, seven, I think. But anyway, it's higher than most of my heroes, so yeah. so don't have threat. Well, and the Hulk. So, so we talked about uh, war gear. We've talked about special units not having too much, having a good amount. We've talked about versatile uh, warbands. We've talked about mounted heroes, mounted models. Again, unless you're... Okay, so all mounted armies are different. So there are armies like Rivendell Knights, Rohan, that have 100% development. So to me, that's like some of them, like a Rohan Rider and a Rivendell Knight are really versatile units because they can do about everything. They can shoot. They can cap objectives. They can get in combat. They tend to have lower model counts, but honestly, your guy, your your specific model can make up his point. Like every model in your army can make up his points in a certain way, um, which tend which really works well because you know we were talking about making models making up their points is like the efficiency of the model. Yeah, I don't think it's overpowered or anything. I just think it's it's versatile. It's versatile, and if you play it right, mm -hmm. now having a having a cavalry. Guy is also an army. A whole cavalry army is also dangerous because low model count. Low model count, and also if a guy gets knocked off his horse, that he's pretty much a warrior yeah. who costs double what he he's worth. Yeah, and that and that's the thing is that that is the thing about this new edition of Hobbit is it's a lot easier for models to get dismounted, and then models kind of remount their horses, which is something I do hope they change. Uh, again, but I'm biased because I play all mounts and armies, but. But when you play, you know, when you when you build your warband for that, you want to, you know, make sure when you deploy with that warband, that you deploy smart, away from any kind of threats to knock them off their mount in the first turn, and you want to utilize your bow shots. You want to utilize your hero's might and their movement. Yeah, movement's a big deal. So honestly, what I try and do is when I verse a ring wraith or a monster, I want to try and take those out asap, like send two heroes against the troll chieftain and try and trap them. It's hard, but. That's honestly what you gotta do if you're playing a mounted army. So movement's uh, pretty key. Uh, you can take uh, eight-inch moving troops with certain armies, like uh, uh, the what elves with G Gildor and Glory. Yeah, uh, Mahur, Mahur, Mahur Isengard, and uh, those are uh, nice little armies because you can give, you can upgrade. Literally, take a hero choice and then upgrade to us, like almost like a scout eight-inch yeah. moving guy. So I do think, because the Hobbit, the there and back again rules. I think, and really, ultimately, the Hobbit, all three of the Hobbit books, they don't have a single rule like that where you can upgrade a troop. So I think what they're going to do is that they might get rid of that. I don't know if they will, because, like, literally when that edition, when those when those source books came out, every book had something like that. So you can upgrade guys to fight four, you can upgrade guys to defense seven, strength four, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So that, so, courage six, 
uh, like most elf factions. So, I think they're going to get rid of that. Now, well, I don't know what they're going to do. Because, to me, Rohan fight four is like, you have to have that. You yeah. Know? They might just make them. They might just make them fight four. And they might, make they might keep the upgrades in there. They might. And I would be fine with that. Because then, in a way, it would differentiate the Hobbit models. and the Because the Hobbit guys are, are a little bit different. Their stats are a little bit more streamlined, I think. Than the Hobbit, than the uh, Lord of the Ring guys, yeah. Especially the heroes and the and the uh, warriors. You got more troop choice too for the Lord of the Ring range than you do the Hobbit range. Well, I think that's all I have. I mean, we talked about some some key stuff. Yeah. Bows, war gear, banners, uh, heroes, mounts, uh, stuff like that. I mean, that's honestly when I build a war band. So when you build your list, your list, your war band is pretty much the pillars of your list, right? Yeah. So when you you want a really strong general war band, guys that can support your general, um, protect him, protect him. So bodyguarded units are a good thing in essence, because then you know you can charge terrifying models without any penalty. Um, having a decent amount of bowfire. I mean, if you're playing like a hundred percent bow limit army, if you're playing Harad or something like that, Rangers of the North or or Great Company, then yeah, you could do the 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 bow limit thing, and then and then that those armies tend to do better in bowfire. But if you're playing an army like any army that's restricted yeah, to, the, to the to the normal the, thing to the normal uh, ratio of uh, bows, one third or whatever. Yeah, one third. Then uh, probably. Probably not take as many bows. Yeah. And uh, if you're playing Harad, then of course, you know, 50% bow limit, take more bows. Mm -hmm. You know, because you have a higher percentage of, a higher chance of hitting. Yep. And, and wounding, because you have more bows. And they have, <laughs> and they have bonuses, like poison arrows yep. on it, so. Yep. Um, yeah, so I hope you guys enjoy this. Uh, I actually enjoy doing the tattoo sounds, because it gives you, it gives us a chance to kind of give us our strategy and perspective, and really the game... There's so many different leagues now, so many different groups. Everyone plays differently. Um, some might play better than others. I mean, I'm not saying I'm the best player ever, but these are just things that would work for me. Yeah, and, things know. that we've kind of learned yeah. and maybe, uh, and of course, go through the crash course and see if it actually yeah. works. And, uh, but these are pretty basic, you know. Pretty a lot basic, of, I yeah. think a lot of people would agree, like, yes, a banner's good, yes, mounted heroes are good. Yep. If you can take them. Yep. So. If you guys enjoyed this video, uh, please like, share, subscribe, and comment. We actually want to know, because I want to know what you guys think about our uh, opinions. I want to hear your opinions. I mean, I want to know if uh, what you guys what works for you guys, so I might be able to implement that in my armies and stuff. So. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, and please, like, share, subscribe, comment below, and uh, happy wargaming. Yeah, happy wargaming.